I think there are a lot of misconceptions out there about retroactive jealousy. I think there's a certain type of person who finds this term, retroactive jealousy, they don't do a lot of further digging, they don't do a lot of further research, they don't do a lot of further introspection. They take this term, they run away with it, and they use this term, the self-diagnosis of retroactive jealousy, as an excuse to adopt some pretty destructive, pretty counterproductive beliefs and habits. And if you buy into any of these four misconceptions about retroactive jealousy, there's a very, very good chance that you're never gonna heal. You're never gonna move on from retroactive jealousy. You're always going to be dealing with this in some form or another. So in today's video, I'm gonna share what I believe to be the top four misconceptions about retroactive jealousy. My name is Zachary Stockhill from retroactivejealousy.com. And since 2013, I've been working one-on-one -on -one with hundreds of men and women from all over the world, helping them overcome retroactive jealousy, helping them overcome obsessive jealousy, and often save their relationships. If you'd like to work with me one-on-one -on -one, or you'd like more information about my work, please visit my website at retroactivejealousy.com. The first and possibly most popular and most damaging and detrimental misconception about retroactive jealousy is that a diagnosis of retroactive jealousy means I'm a victim, means I can adopt a victim mentality. Well, I found this term retroactive jealousy, so it is what it is, you know, I'm a victim and there's nothing I can do about it. This is who I am, this is my diagnosis and I can't change, that's it. And of course, I hope if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that that's nonsense, right? The fact that you're struggling with retroactive jealousy does not mean that you're defined by this problem, does not mean that you're destined to live with this problem forever. And furthermore, are you going to let this problem, let this challenge define you? Or alternatively, are you gonna define your response to this challenge? The choice truly is yours. And if you want a different way of kind of framing this whole issue, this whole question of victimization, victim mentality, do you wanna be a victim or do you wanna be a survivor? Do you wanna be passive or do you wanna be proactive? Do you wanna be active or do you wanna be reactive? Do you wanna make decisions or do you want life to just kinda of come at you and you have to deal with the consequences? I'm being firm here, I'm being harsh, but I'm doing this for a reason because I see this happening all the time and I've been seeing this happening for almost 10 years now of working on this issue. People who define themselves as a victim, they just say, you know what, I've been dealing with this for so long, there's no hope, there's no hope of change, nothing can happen. And if that sounds like you, if you identify with being a victim, you just think hope is lost and I'm hopeless, whatever. Two questions for you. Number one, do you really want to overcome this problem? Now, some of you watching this, you're gonna throw your phone across the room, you're gonna unsubscribe to my channel, you're gonna send me a nasty email, <laughs> maybe. Please don't. Anyway, you're gonna have a strong response to that question, and I get it. I'm trying to be provocative here. Because it's a good question to ask yourself sometimes if you're dealing with a problem and you feel stuck with it. You feel stuck with this problem. Do I really want to solve this problem? Because sometimes in life, the answer is no. Sometimes this problem is filling a need for you. Sometimes it's adding meaning to your life. It's adding excitement to your life. It's adding drama to your life. It's adding a sense of importance to your life. It's letting you feel like a victim and there's a certain comfort in defining yourself as a victim and letting yourself be defined that way. Because some people think of victimization, they think of being a victim as this passive thing, like, well, there's nothing I can do, I'm a victim, right? And some people take comfort in that. It's a big, big mistake if you actually wanna move on with this problem. If you don't wanna move on from retroactive jealousy, please unsubscribe to my channel. I mean, <laughs> I don't know why you're wasting your time. So I hope the answer is yes to that question. But if the answer is no, that you don't actually wanna solve this problem, it's really worthwhile going away for a while, thinking about that really. Why don't I wanna solve this problem? And how can I challenge some of those beliefs? My second question for you, if you're defining yourself as a victim, what have you actively done to change? What steps have you actually taken? What have you actually done to fix this problem? And I mean that seriously, what have you actually done? I got an email recently from someone. Uh, he signed up for my online course, Good Over Your Partners Past Fast. Uh, I don't know, a few months ago, something like that. Sending me an email saying, Zach, I feel hopeless and there's no way out and I just feel totally, you know, totally hopeless. I'm just, I'm destined to live with this issue forever. And I emailed him back. I said, okay, well, how much of the course have you gone through? He responded to me, oh, I haven't started the course. <laughs> Do I have to say anything else? 
If you take the steps, good things will come. If you don't take the steps, if you stew in a victim mentality, if you don't engage in any kind of change, if you don't try new things, you're going to stay stuck where you are. So if you take away nothing else from this video, reject the victim mentality, work toward being a survivor instead. The second misconception I see all the time drives me crazy is people using retroactive jealousy as an excuse to treat their partner poorly. So there's a certain uh, subset of people who find my work, they find this term retroactive jealousy, they find someone else's work. And again, they don't dig a little deeper. They don't engage in any introspection, any real learning. They don't really engage in any real change around this issue. They diagnose themselves with retroactive jealousy and they abuse their partner emotionally sometimes. They keep doing the same thing. They harass their partner with questions about their past. They just complete jerk to their partner, which by the way, I absolutely did once upon a time. I want to make that clear. But anyway, you know, I used to do this once upon a time and I see a lot of other people doing this as well, where they diagnose themselves, they think there's no hope and they just continue to lash out at their partner, treat their partner poorly, sometimes abuse their partner emotionally. A diagnosis of retroactive jealousy, if you've diagnosed yourself with this issue, does not give you permission to continue treating your partner poorly. Because again, you have control over your choices, over your actions, you can try new things. You have 100% control of everything that's going on in your body, in your brain. You can change your decisions, you can change your mental state, you can even change your thoughts whenever you want. It really is as simple as that. It takes some practice, it takes some work, but the point is, do not use a diagnosis of retroactive jealousy as an excuse to treat your partner poorly. It's just a bad thing to do. Your partner probably doesn't deserve that. In fact, they almost certainly don't deserve that. In fact, they certainly don't deserve that doesn't serve anyone. And let me tell you from personal experience, if you continue doing this, you'll do a tremendous amount of damage to the relationship, damage that has the potential to be irreversible. And what's more, you'll also just feel guilty and lousy and bad about yourself later on if you actually put in the work to change your victim mentality and take the steps to beat retroactive jealousy. This will come back to haunt you later on. Don't use this as an excuse to treat your partner poorly. There's literally no excuse for it. On the flip side of that, the third misconception about retroactive jealousy is retroactive jealousy is not an excuse to stay in a toxic relationship. In other words, if you're in a relationship and your partner is treating you poorly and maybe their past has glaring red flags, you know, more red flags than a Chinese parade. <laughs> if there's serious red flags in your partner's past, the relationship is toxic and you've identified that but you're still working to you know, work on your issue while your partner has all kinds of issues that they haven't touched, they're not taking ownership of any of their responsibility in the relationship, then you can't fix that. And if you feel fundamentally that your partner doesn't share your values, you know, the relationship is toxic, they're treating you poorly, their past is a glaring red flag, <laughs> there's all kinds of issues in their past, then don't stay in the relationship. It really is as simple as that. Sometimes breaking up is absolutely the right move. As I often say, you know, I say endlessly on this channel, not all retroactive jealousy is irrational. A lot of it is, and that represents the majority of viewers on this channel. But there are some people who find my work, they go through it and they decide, you know what, my partner's past is actually a real problem. They don't share my values. The relationship is messed up for all kinds of reasons. And if so, move on. Try to be kind and try to be empathetic as you do so, but make that choice. Don't torture yourself endlessly for months or years longer. If you feel like your partner fundamentally does not share your values, you know, their past is actually a deal breaker, move on. It's really okay. And finally, I've saved kind of the most rare misconception for last, uh, but it still comes up with um, surprising frequency, at least to my mind. The fourth misconception about retroactive jealousy is retroactive jealousy means that I can never have a relationship or I can never have a happy relationship. I just have to be single because I struggle with retroactive jealousy. It is what it is and that's it. If you feel that way, I get it. I had certain moments, very dark moments a long time ago where I entertained similar thoughts briefly, but you know, those th thoughts did cross my mind. If you feel that way, number one, my heart goes out to you because that's a horrible way to feel. Um, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. That's a pretty lonely and hopeless feeling I'm sure that you're experiencing, but it's nonsense. Because people like me and a small army of other retroactive jealousy survivors, not victims, survivors, will tell you that it is absolutely possible to work your way through this issue, to move on with your life, 
to enjoy an incredible relationship with an incredible person and have fun and enjoy your life and have babies and stay together happily for you know decades on end and all the rest. It really is possible. All hope is not lost. And do you really want to live the rest of your life without the joy of a long-term relationship? without the joy of sharing your life with someone and sharing love and growing love and choosing love and practicing love, receiving love. Do you really want to live without that? Like seriously, seriously consider that. I don't know about you, but that is something that I wouldn't trade for anything. That's one of the best parts of being alive is a good long-term relationship. And if you're watching this and feeling hopeless, feeling like, you know, retroactive jealousy just means you're destined to be alone forever. It's nonsense. It's not true. There's a better future waiting for you just around the corner. If you simply start trying new things, take the necessary steps to heal, you'll put retroactive jealousy behind you and you'll find an incredible relationship whenever you're ready for it. But in conclusion, if you take away nothing else from this video, I really want to hammer this point home. Don't let retroactive jealousy define you because you can define your response to this challenge. It really is as simple as that. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for hearing me out. If you got anything out of this video, please take a minute to let me know by clicking the like button below. You can also leave a comment beneath this video, sharing your thoughts, sharing your struggles, sharing your feedback. I'd love to hear from you. And while you're at it, please make sure you're subscribed to my channel as well to be notified of new videos moving forward. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you again very soon.